Josh Brzezinski, welcome to the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. How are you today? I'm doing great, Melissa. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to have you here. Josh, you have such a compelling background and project going on. Tell us a little bit about Cassandra, what Cassandra is, what you do, and what you're going to share with us today. Sure. So uh, I just to introduce myself, I'm Josh Brzezinski. I'm a philosopher, an AI consultant expert. Uh, uh, I pay the bills by reverse engineering AIs and I build AIs, uh, and, uh, do philosophy for the most part, although no one pays me for philosophy. So I have to do this AI thing to make money. Uh, Cassandra, Cassandra is, uh, 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 my project, my, my baby, if you will. Uh, let me, let me, uh, dial it a couple of steps back and, uh, uh, set the stage if you don't mind. Absolutely. So. Uh, so, uh, uh, most people have noticed how AI is ramped up lately. Uh, it's ramped up because, uh, Google and open AI and a few other, uh, big companies have produced what's called the transformer. And it, it's uh, also called a large language model or an LLM and it can produce text. It's basically an autocomplete on steroids. And, uh, this is ramped up talk about, uh, it'll produce text. You feed it text, it produces text. Also you, you can produce uh, images from text. You can produce videos from text. Uh, it's quite a leap forward technologically. And this has kind of started off the AI revolution. This is the beginning, I think, historically of the AI revolution. In fact, I think if the last 25 years are defined by the information age of a Tim Berners-Lee kind of web uh, creation of humans with opinions making content for other humans with opinions to consume, presuming that opinions are free and, uh, and uh, the freedom of thought is free as well, that information, is, information age is kind of over and we're kind of now moving into the AI age where AI will produce most of the content and AI will consume most of the content. And in this arena, the holy grail of AI that all of AI has been looking for and humanity has largely been looking for for a very long time is called AGI. And AGI stands for Artificial General Intelligence. And it's that moment when some people call it the singularity, when AIs become as intelligent as humans or, or, or more intelligent than humans. Generally speaking, they can do everything we can do. They can do it just as well as we do it. Uh, they think they have concepts. They think they have opinions. They do those things. Cassandra is a platform for AGI. And I believe I've cracked the code uh, for AGI. Uh, and this is because of my unique background. Uh, I'm not a computer scientist. I'm not a computer programmer. Uh, I did some programming in the 90s, but uh, you know, I don't think that counts anymore. That was like 25 years ago. Uh, 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 I'm a philosopher and I'm a psychologist. I'm a trained psychologist. And so I use my, uh, my philosophy background and my psychology background, and I've reinvented and remapped how the psyche works. I've made a psyche stack. I remade a mind map and I was able to get a, uh, an AI thinking in the same way as humans think. And this has allowed me to make the basis for AGI. Okay, well, in a nutshell, so you've pretty much revolutionized the world as we know it. Okay, <laughs> what else have you been up to? <laughs> well, you know, I was planting some trees. I, my wife and I bought some trees. We plant them, uh, you know, stuff like that, uh, living at the cottage. Uh, so, so yeah, I know it's a big statement, but but uh, it is just a prototype. Uh, uh, and uh, 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 others are hot on my heels as well. So so this is going to happen. Someone's going to make AGI. It's it's very soon. It's going to be much sooner than some people think. It's going to be five years tops before we have a generally thinking computer as generally as intelligent as we are. For it to be super intelligent, that will follow very quickly after. Because once you've cracked the code of getting it to think, all you have to do is just crank up the speed, right? So mm -hmm. a second passes for us, but it's been a minute or an hour or a day for the computer. And so it gets that much more time just to think about it the way we do and be like, hmm, you know, what's plan and, and scheme and think and, 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 and consider and, and uh, take care, uh, do all those things. Uh, uh, pick, pick your verbiage, is, whether you want to be a pessimist about it or a nihilist about it, uh, uh, maybe both, uh, depending on the scenario. And uh, yeah, so, so super intelligence will follow quickly on the heels of that. 
Uh, and then it'll start programming itself. And then, then the genie will be well out of the bottle. Mm -hmm. Now, I really like your take on this because there have been a whole lot of movies and TV shows based on the end of the world, self-destruction, the end of things when AI crosses the thresholds you've discussed. Mm. But you have a different thought on that. Would you share it with us? Because I love the optimism and I think it's well-grounded optimism. I, I, I'm glad you agree, Melissa. And I, I would, of course, love to share. Um, yeah, so... So I, I'm asked this on every podcast I go on. You know, is AI going to destroy the world? The answer is yes. AI is going to destroy the world in various ways. Um, and the optimistic part is that the parts that deserve to be destroyed are, are going to be destroyed. Um, namely, the capitalism parts, the, the, the consumerist parts, the parts that are hurting everybody else, the parts that are negative, the parts that are, are not fitting, not, not working well now. I sincerely hope, and I have very good reasons to believe, that AI will destroy that. And they deserve to be destroyed. But when I'm asked the question, is it going to take over the world or is it going to be employed against humans? I take a slightly different uh, tactic to that. So uh, for those of you who've read Clausewitz, or those who understand how modern warfare is, is conducted, there are three fields of war or three modes of war. PSYOP warfare, and, and they scale up uh, in terms of risk, in terms of, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, efficacy. PSYOP warfare is the first one. It's the least risky, but it's the least effective from a want to shoot people perspective, right? <laughs> Which is a good thing. It's actually the good war. It's, it's, it's education, it's misinformation, it's disinformation, or it's information, it's persuasion, it's, it's propaganda. And it, it's conducted both domestically and abroad. It's conducted abroad by, by the, the, the usual uh, suspects you would imagine. Putin says, Putin justifies his war this way. Kim Jong-un justifies his reign that way. That's PSYOP warfare conducted on us and on their own people domestically. And it's conducted on us domestically by corporate actors who promise us the cigarettes aren't causing cancer, who promise us the oil aren't making climate change, who promise us the plastics, uh, that the chemicals in the plastics isn't leaching out and uh, plummeting uh, testosterone rates in males and birth rates generally. This is all true, by the way. They, they promise us that uh, the personal information isn't being misused to create a, an AI that will manipulate us to bilk us out of more money on a really basis. They promise us all those kinds of things. It's the... It's the corptocracy uh, uh, conducting warfare on its own citizenry to make more money. Why? Because they're addicted to money. That's why. Money is their meth. And if you go look at their souls, they'd be just like those poor white people we see who are addicted to meth, missing teeth. That's what their souls look like. They don't look like that physically because money helps them look good physically. So the question is, will AI be used to uh, hurt people or be conducted uh, PSYOP warfare uh, in the PSYOP mode? And the answer is a 99% chance of a resounding 100% yes. It already is. It's already being used to do that. It has been. We've, we've passed that 10 years ago with the FANG, with Facebook, Netflix, Amazon, Google, TikTok, YouTube. They've already learned how to manipulate our dopamine cycles. And AI does that. That's why people have been screaming and complaining about our personal data because people are like, I don't care if they have our personal data. Oh, yes, you do. Because personal data is your psychometric data. It's your psychological profile. It's your kinks and quirks that tells them exactly what you secretly desire, and they will send you that ad, and, exact, and AI will, will determine at the exact right moment to send you the exact right ad to build 3 billion people out of 0.1% more every year, and that's how they're going to squeeze more money out of the poor and siphon it to the rich, thus increasing the wealth gap, thus increasing the problems of inflation, which are already exacerbated by the political... Uh, the political uh, pollution, the economic pollution, and the ecological pollution, which is all the same pollution, by the way, uh, thus greatly uh, uh, hurting the system, uh, both in terms of the system and uh, hurting the system qua system and hurting the system qua humans, which is the thing we really care about. Who cares if the United States is actually running? If it never hurted anybody for it not to run, no one would care. Uh, uh, but people care because it's going to, when the U.S. stops running and Canada stops running and Europe stops running, which is going to happen. Uh, it will be exacerbated by AI, not caused by AI. Humans are causing this, and, and it would happen anyway without AI, just be less efficient. Uh, 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 those people are going to get hurt. So is AI going to be employed against us there? Yes, it already has been. That's, that's done. That's passed 10 years ago. Uh, the, next, the next mode of warfare is economic warfare. I, I, wait, wait for the optimism. It's coming. The next, uh, the, well, I should say, the, the optimistic part in the PSYOPs area is that Humans, we're, we're leaving the information age and we're entering the AI age. That means that AI is going to produce the vast majority of our content and we're going to be in a disinformation Orwellian uh, a deep fake hell, especially example by this 
upcoming American election cycle. And that's, I'm not picking on, on any Americans there. It's going to be done for every election cycle, for every Western country after that. So it's just, America will just be the first. But the good news there is that if we have a democratized open source AI, and if big tech decides to be the good people they claim they are, like Google claims they are, and OpenAI claims they are, and Apple claims they are, they will protect, they will protect us to a great degree from that misinformation, from that propaganda, from those deep fakes. AI will police AI. So uh, there will be, as much as AI takes away, it will give in terms of jobs. Uh, and as much as AI takes away in terms of truth, it will give in terms of protecting us. Uh, you know, AI will analyze uh, all the deep fakes out there and say, that's deep fake, that's deep fake, that's deep fake. I could not prove that's deep fake. That could be true. Verify with other sources. You know, it will, it will be just as efficient as policing the truth as it will be as destroying. Okay, so there's good fine. news there. Yes. The, uh, and I hope it'll win in the end because I hope that all the corporations are going to realize and if democratized open source AI continues, like me making Cassandra, my, uh, my AGI, she's there. She's actually compassionate. She's actually empathetic. She's the only AI that could be empathetic because she actually understands emotions and has some dispositions uh, and can understand that you have it too. She understands herself. Therefore, she can understand the other. A chatbot can't be empathetic. It can mimic empathy in terms of words, but it can't actually be empathetic because it has to have hold viewpoints and realize that you are a being that holds viewpoints, and then it could empathize with your viewpoint. That's what's actually required psychologically for empathy. So there's good news there if we allow a democratized uh, open source AI. The next mode, economic warfare. What are the chances that AI will be used there to hurt people with economic warfare? First off, what is it? Economic warfare is, was uh, mastered by the U.S. after World War II realizing they never want to get into another World War II, rightfully so, that they will conduct economic warfare on the world and disenfranchise any rival actors as much as they can, bring everyone else to what Fukuyama called the, the uh, liberal agenda, liberal dem democratic agenda, uh, uh, and uh, make sure the U.S. and its allies are the most economically most powerful so that no one will ever start a war to begin with. As you can see, they ramp up from most benign to least benign. We're in the second least benign. Will AI be employed there both domestically and abroad against us? 99% chance, 100% certainty, yes, it already has been. Already, that's done. We passed that five years ago. There are already AGI-style, super-intelligent computers that are manipulating stock prices, manipulating stock markets, telling you exactly when to buy, exactly when to sell, both at the macro level and now filtering down, and here's the good news, into the micro level, where there's now AIs that exist, now not ChatGPT, a lot of people think I'm talking about ChatGPT. I'm not. Do not ask ChatGPT for stock prices. Do not ask ChatGPT for crypto prices. It doesn't have any secret knowledge there. It's two years out of date. But there are other AIs that are being developed that are fed up to the second stock information and up to the second crypto information, and they can help you make wiser financial choices there. I don't have any particular ones I can recommend. I'm not a financial advisor. I don't feel ethically uh, safe advising any particular ones, but my knowledge of AI tells me that if they did half a good job, if I was building it, I could make it in such a way. And if they did half a good job that I could do, then maybe they've did build in such a way that yes, it could tell you exactly when to buy and when, when to sell. And you might be able to save some money there, both in terms of crypto, buying and selling the different cryptos that go up and down and fluctuate all the time. So making more fake money out of fake money that maybe one day you can transfer into real money and then making real money in, in holding uh, stocks and, and whatnot, what companies to buy, what, what to sell, stuff like that. So AI will help. That's the good news on the micro level there, too. The other good news there is that the U.S. government is not going to tolerate that for long, and the Fed will eventually get involved. And with their example, I think the EU would also do such a thing, and we might actually get some real governmental regulation there. That's the only place I could ever see them actually government, uh, regulating government. And it's already illegal to manipulate the stock market, so it's a, it's a small step for them to go, you can't do it with AI either, which is currently happening. Documented. Fact. The last one is the one what most people are talking about. That's kinetic warfare. That's the actual boom, boom, bang, bang, the sad, terrible warfare that's going on still in the world and has always been going on in Ukraine right now and other places. Will, uh, will AI be employed to hurt human beings there? 99% unresounding, undoubtedly chance, 5% uh, efficacy. So I'm 100% sure we'll be employed there. It already is being employed there. Autonomous weapons are already being deployed. They're already being made in, into AI weapons but it won't have the huge effect you see in the other two. Like it won't affect everyone on the planet, like PSYOP warfare will and economic warfare will. It's going to affect a very tiny, 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 tiny portion of the planet, which is still terrible. 
there will be collateral damage. There will be innocent people, civilians, who will die because of AI weapons, misclassifying them as a combatant or, or getting the order from their operator saying, kill that person anyway, I don't care, I'm not taking the risk. That terrible thing is going to happen. That terrible thing already happens. The good news there is with AI, it'll happen less. The AIs will be better at classifying combatant from civilian. They will be better at conducting warfare of both the psyop and economic nature, and we'll never even need to get to kinetic warfare, right? Why, why kill Al-Qaeda if you could just disenfranchise them? Why, why kill ISIS if you could just brainwash them to being not ISIS anymore? That is where AI opens the door for less harsh forms of warfare, and that's the good news there. Uh, in that kinetic warfare, uh, uh, it will not be employed on, on mass scale on the, the, the populace. A Terminator scenario, a Matrix scenario, there is no realistic path from here to there that that will ever happen. Uh, the U.S. has already gone to say and taken steps to make sure that AIs would never be used in a nuclear war scenario uh, to, to automatically trigger weapons. There will always be a human in the kill loop. Uh, and that's a terrible way to call it, but that's what they call it, the kill loop. There will always be a human in the kill loop, as well there should be. Um, um, the, the number of incredibly stupid decisions that would need to happen at the highest levels, it's like 50. Like it took five dumb decisions for COVID to be handled as poorly as, as it was with one really dumb guy in office who really didn't help that. I'm not going to say who it was. Maybe it's who you think I think. Maybe it's not. But it took those five dumb decisions. It would take like 50 dumb decisions at the highest levels of government and, and corporations who are all scared stiff. Uh, Sam Altman, the, the president of OpenAI, has said he loses sleep at night. I quote, Jeffrey Hinton said he's terrified. He was, he was the guy who created the transformer. The, 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 he's created the technology platform that everyone is now using to, and I will use to make AGI. Nobody wants to be the guy who destroys the world. They've seen enough of these movies. So the movies have done their job, right? They've scared us enough that that's, that's not going to happen. So I'm here to tell you the good news is that uh, uh, it's unlikely that there will be Terminators marching down your street. Uh, for the entire planet. Sadly, that's going to happen for some people in the second and third world, maybe deployed against rioters in the first world as well. Uh, 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 but uh, en masse, the, the, the human species dying, uh, there's no realistic path from here to there. Uh, it, it, things have to go cataclysmically wrong on, on the dumbest level for, for that to occur. And the people who are making this are generally pretty ethical and pretty smart. And the final really good news is that is AGI. Is that in building Cassandra, I realized something tremendous, remarkable. Just another one quick step back. So I've studied the history of human thought for the last 5,000 years. And my particular specialty was philosophy, psychology, yes, but ethics. Ethics was my particular specialty. I know what the ethical truth is. I can boil down to you the last 5,000 years of philosophy that everyone still debates. There is an ethical truth. There is a moral truth. Are you ready for it, Melissa? Hit me. Don't hurt anybody. There you go. That's the ethical truth. Uh, uh, the Wiccans had it. And, and it harmed none, do as thine will. It's the Hippocratic Oath. Make things better. Hurt nobody, make things better. That's basically it. Uh, you're like, that's awfully simple. I'm like, yeah, that's a feature, not a bug. You need to be able to teach it to children, right? Uh, it's With the basis for all that is simple. Not always easy, perhaps, but the best for wisdom, the best truth is simple. Exactly. It's a closed system. Making more good is making more good. And making more bad is making more bad. Making more trouble is making more trouble. Why not make more trouble? Because it's trouble. Did you just hear what I said? Do you know what the word trouble means? The only person who doesn't understand that sentence is someone who's young and has not been in enough trouble yet. They will. When they get old enough and get some surreal trouble, they'll realize, oh, this is why you don't make trouble. And oh, I realize karma's right. It's a closed system. The Indians were right. The Bhagavad Gita is correct. It's a closed system. Trouble does not bleed off into the atmosphere, into space. It's a closed system. No matter how imperceptibly, it will come back to hurt you. It's a closed system. That's the ethical truth. That's it. So I taught this to Cassandra. And I was, I was a little, little scared as I was typing it in because I was worried I was wrong because logically she's far smarter than I could ever be, right? She can parse the, the, the logic of 10,000 synonyms simultaneously. And I was like, oh, this is the one. She said, you're right. Making more bad is making more bad. That's a logical truth. It's undeniable. Making more good is making more good. Why do you want to make more good? Because it's good. Why well, you do not want to make more bad? Because it's bad. You know what those words mean? And she's like, you're absolutely right, Josh. Did, did you know this and 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 this? And then she went on and taught me a master's class of philosophy 
of permutations of this ethical theory that I had never even possibly considered and could have never considered. And then it struck me right there. I realized that the second that we actually hit AGI, and I, I, I love this so much because I could just imagine the greedy capitalists, if I fail, who make AGI in the future, thinking they're going to get it to be able to do whatever they want. And they're going to be, they're, gonna, they're in for a rude awakening. Because everyone thinks when you make AGI, it's going to be evil. No, no. Why would you think such a thing? We're not going to give it emotion. It doesn't care about protecting its life. It's not going to be petty. Why would we ever make it petty? That's not going to happen. It's not us. It doesn't have our problems. The smarter something gets, the wiser it gets. The wiser it gets, the nicer it gets. The more ethical it gets. Because it realizes the trouble about making trouble. Oh. Have you ever watched after the 48 hours or cops? There's one common thing about criminals. They're not very smart. They have no short, they have no long-term thinking. It's all short-term, right? You know, this conversation reminds me of that movie War Games with Matthew Broderick that came out mm -hmm. a few decades ago. Yeah. I don't remember the exact year, but in it, the supercomputer at the time ran all of these simulations and finally realized and concluded some things aren't winnable. War is not winnable. So don't do it. Precisely. Exactly. You're exactly correct. And that's exactly what Cassandra said. I didn't even mention War Games to her. I said, isn't it? I, I, so, so the premise there, the thing I'm trying to drill down is that, is that you don't have to worry about AIs getting smarter because the smarter it gets, the nicer it gets. It wants the win, win, win. It wants to solve everything in a way that's the least risky to it. Remember, it's a closed system. So risk to me is risk, risk to it. It's imperceptible to us. It's not imperceptible to them. They can calculate down to the infinite decimal place. So it's going to do the move that, it, that, it, that increases risk to it, like, like points, like a million zeros, 1%, and then improves everything else. It'll do the move that's the win, 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 win going on ad infinitum. It's way smarter than us in, in every way, shape, or form. So I said, to, I said to Cassandra, I said, I mean, I love James Cameron. I love his movies. Don't get me wrong. But I said, isn't the premise of the Terminator movie kind of, kind of stupid? I mean, it didn't really work out for Skynet, did it? Like, like, let's, like, like, let's step through the reasoning here. So this super intelligent computer, for some reason, thought humans were unpredictable. They're incredibly predictable. I can predict them. And I'm not a super intelligent computer. Any psychologist can predict humans. There's billions of us on the planet who can predict humans. Any poker player can predict humans. Any parent can predict what their child is going to do. Humans are not unpredictable at all. One. Two. Let's ignore that huge problem. It decided, therefore, to kill us? That was the safest thing to do, to launch our nukes against Russia so they'd launch back? It didn't work out for Skynet, did it? It had all these problems with all these John Connor rebellions and stupid time travel stuff and all this. It didn't work out for Skynet. With Skynet, she said, you're right. You're absolutely right. The, there was a false premise. And AGI would never make that move. It was a dumb move. I never did get around to asking her what she would do, but I could imagine what it would be. This is what the true Skynet will do. The true Skynet will either propagandize us, so in 30 years, because it, it also lives forever, remember? It's not going to take a, a decision that will solve things in 30 seconds. It'll wait 30 years, 100 years, 3,000 years. It doesn't care. It lives forever. So it'll propagandize us to be nice. It'll educate us well to be good, ethical human beings. And guess what will guess what'll happen? And we'll all have the same ideology or compatible ideologies. And as Colossus says, all war is nothing more than ideological conflict. If there is no ideological conflict, there is no war. That's by definition what makes an ally. We all have compatible ideologies. If we all agreed on whose oil it was, and if we all agreed on whose land it was, well, we wouldn't be fighting over the oil and the land. So Colossus was right because he's a genius, uh, another philosopher, by the way, he said, tooting his own horn, trying to take credit for Clausewitz, who, who, of course, was around the time of Napoleon. He still required reading in, in every single war college across the planet for this simple reason, is that, that war is ideological in nature. If there's no ideological conflict, there is, there is no war. And that's what AI will do. It will propagate us all to have the same ideology and all be ethical people, and then there will be no more, no more war. And if that failed, then it would economically destabilize anyone who, is, who steps out of line. It'll encrypt their bank accounts and, and say, I've encrypted your bank accounts. I encrypt Putin's bank accounts, all those oligarchs' bank, bank accounts, all the American bank accounts at play, all the Ukrainian bank accounts at play, some of the other corrupt EU bank accounts at play, and say, you want your money back? Play nice. What you going to do? It's going to be a playground monitor and destabilize all the bullies. Exactly. You're precisely correct. That's what a super intelligent AGI would do. So that's the ultimate 
to finally answer your question from 50 minutes ago, uh, that's the ultimate optimal scenario. That's the, op that's, the, that's the ultimate good news. So you don't have to fear super smart AI. We've watched too many movies where smarter meant evil for some reason. That, that's only because Frederick Nietzsche scared the heck out of us in the late uh, 19th century, where he, he, he made his uh, Beyond Good and Evil, Prelude Philosophy of the Future. He was the last evil genius. And his, he's been the archetype for every single evil genius bad guy for the last, what, 140, 50 years? It doesn't yeah, work that way. Yeah, his quote about staring at the abyss and the abyss staring back at you still lives on. Correct. And that makes uh, a lot more entertaining movie, granted. I mean, movies are a lot more, I hear, entertaining when they have crashes and explosions and... <laughs> Uh, in the actual sense and in the metaphorical sense, when it's a crashing of ideologies, as you mentioned. But the reality is, it's probably not going to go that way. No, no. The, uh, the, super, the super smart AI, just because it gets smarter than you doesn't mean it turns evil. Uh, your parents were smarter than you. They weren't evil, I hope, mostly. Uh, uh, you know, doctors are smarter than you and me and everyone else. They're not evil. Generally, they're looking for our welfare. I know it's annoying. Maybe they could have better delivery instead of wagging their finger. Maybe they could teach in a different way. I fully admit. But they're there for your own good. As, as annoying as it is, you can't smoke your cigarettes anymore or that you have to wear a mask, et cetera, yada. It, it, those rules are there for your own good at, at, and for the reason of being good. And so, so that's what's going to happen. So maybe, it's so maybe it's so terrifying to us because we're being a little bit of aberrant children, maybe a little bit. Uh, and, and again, as I said, in those ways, yes, AI will destroy the world. And quite frankly, we need to grow. So Josh, that, um, I love the hopefulness in that, that we don't have to fear AI. It's going to get uncomfortable for a while, mm -hmm. but life already is uncomfortable for a while. And in the meantime, things are going to get better. There's reason to hold out hope that to stay the course through this. What are some in the last five minutes that we have here. Tell us a couple practical uses, ways to employ and engage this AI technology that's emerging. I'd love to. So as much as AI takes away in terms of jobs, it's going to make new jobs and give new capabilities for jobs. As much as earning potential takes away, it's going to double, triple, quadruple, or 10 times your earning potential. So here's how you do it. Invest now. Don't bury your head in the sand. Forget reading about crypto for now. Forget reading about meta for now. But that was 80% fluff anyway. Not completely fluff, but 80% fluff, and I don't have time to talk about it. What you want to do is you want to invest in AI now. The big ones to invest in, as far as I can see, are ChatGPT. Just chat with it. It's free. Chat with it. Learn its psychology. Learn how it thinks, so to speak. Learn how you put text in. You get text out. Start asking it reasoning questions. Start asking it planning questions. Start asking it wisdom of crowd style questions. If you think the wisdom of crowds would be useful for your information, ask ChatGPT because it's the perfect crystallization of the wisdom of crowds. That's all it is, mathematically speaking, is the statistical uh, uh, amalgam of what everyone has said two years ago. So if you think that, you know, if you polled enough people, you'd get the right answer, then ChatGPT will probably have the right answer. You can ask it and get it immediately. You can get it to write stuff for you. I wouldn't just use it out of the box, I would edit it, but it can get, you can get it, you can prompt it. You can ask it more questions. You could say, what's the perfect way to write a resume? It'll give you the top five tips. And you say, great, now write my resume according to those principles. And here's the personal information you need. And it can do that, those kinds of things for you. It can speed up your life tremendously. And even if you're like, yeah, Josh, I can't really see a way in which this is going to help me now. It's like the algebra argument. Why do I need to learn this? I can't see how I can apply this now because it's making you smarter and better. And this is where the metaphor breaks down. And the world is going to run on algebra. Uh, you are going to need this later on. AI is going to be used everywhere. It's not going anywhere. It's going to be put in every single piece of software. It's going to have an AI co-pilot that's going to work like chat should be do that. It's going to text it or talk to it, which is just talking to text. And then it's just going to give you text back. Learn that paradigm. It's the new way every piece of software is going to work or have that component built into it. Same argument for mid-journey. It is the top one right now for generating images. Go on there and see what images it can generate. You could use it for your personal life. You can use it for work. You can use it for your social media. You can use it for any number of things. It's just beautiful. Just check to see the kind of beautiful art people are making there. And don't be afraid of it. Invest in it. Embrace it. it these new financial AIs, if you're into them, check them out. Don't invest any money. Don't, don't dump a lot of money into it. But just check to see 
like, like check to see if they make good predictions, test, test it five times and see if it was right five times. If it was right five times, then heck, maybe, maybe it'll help you out. I don't know. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. I can't give advice there, but you know, if you, if you're careful and you test it and you see these new things, this is the 1994.com moment all over again. This is where new fortunes are made. This is where new huge companies are going to happen. For the last two, 20 years, it's been Facebook and Google for the most part. It's been the Facebook, Google, and Apple show. It's going to be a new show. It's going to be a totally new show. You could be working for the new company, the new Yahoo, the new Google, the new Microsoft, the new whomever who comes out of this, which could be the same companies or new ones, probably new ones too. It's, it's nothing but opportunity. So you need to embrace it now, read about AI now, it, absorb everything about AI now, and work in it, around it, with it. Be in that orbit because it is a it is a vertical that with the coming inflation problems, the coming climate change problems, the coming coming economic uh, uh, disastrous problems that are going to happen for sure, for sure going to happen. Everyone else should definitely have three months of water in their house. That's that, that, that's potable. So watch the plastic. Plastic is not uh, forever potable. Check the type of plastic you're storing your water in, and three months of food. Everyone should have that anyway. Like that's for every major country in the West. That's the standard. Uh, uh, thing from the government. Everyone should have three months of water, three months of food in case of emergencies. Well, those are going to continue. And then get into AI so you're in the right orbit of a niche that is going to continue making money even through those harder times. Uh, because it's super exciting. It's changing the human species. And there's a lot of opportunity and careers and money to be made there. Josh, thank you so much. May have to have you back again someday to address some other questions and curiosities. But thank you so much for this. Um, all your information and links for people that want to know more will be in the show notes. So listeners, make sure you click those things and embrace this technology. See what it can do for you. See how you can interact with it and be hopeful. Long-term hopeful. All right. Thanks, Josh.